Freakonomics by Steven Dubler and Steven Levitt. Welcome to my channel. My name is Samuel and I want to make self-growth normal. If you want to make self-growth normal, because I don't want to do it alone, and who doesn't want to make self-growth normal, then make sure to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It helps with ranking and SEO and all this other stuff and I really appreciate it because so much work goes into making these videos. You'd be surprised. A lot of work really goes into making these videos. This book is about a lot of things, honestly. It's meant to see the hidden side of everything, but there's no unifying theme. And what's weird about this is that the book actually says this. It's not normal economics, it's what economics should allegedly apply to but does not. And I know it kind of sounds like I'm trying to see the whole world through a straw here, but bear with me. It answers questions like, what do school teachers and sumo wrestlers have in common? How is the KKK like a group of real estate agents? Why is there not more crime than there should be? Why does cheating actually work? And why do cheaters win? This is the type of approach, the way these guys talked about these topics and kind of looked into this type of study, it reminded me of Malcolm Gladwell a little bit. Now the hidden side of things is much more random than I expected it to be. Like I didn't know that people are willing to, actually maybe I did, to pay different prices for goods based on who's selling them. And for the first like half of this audiobook, I couldn't stop listening, thinking about Malcolm Gladwell when I was listening to it. I noticed that these, these two guys, they ask <laughs> weirder, more random questions. But Gladwell is a lot more organized. He uses his books to kind of, a lot of studies to kind of pertain to a point and he uses the points together to kind of sum up the book and explain its purpose. To put Freakonomics in one sentence other than to say it's just the hidden side of everything, I'll put it this way, it's too difficult for me to do. Based on how much time I gave myself to do this review with the list of other books that I have to review, but it definitely makes sense. And, and I have to admit, I'm a little bit polarized by it. Maybe I'm not understanding all of it. Maybe the book was a little tricky for me, but I felt like a lot of it sounded like a little bit of a mesh of this analysis. Mesh? It's one of those moments where I'm not sure if it's the right word. Of, you know, data analysis. Which is cool, it's interesting. Some stories that led to particular discoveries in the field. But I wonder why there isn't a sole purpose to this book. Like, if it's to see the hidden side of everything, why do we need to see the hidden side of everything? How important is that? Normally when I listen to a book, or a book I review actually, it explains, like, typically in the beginning at least, why it's important and what how people can get the most out of it. And there's a long, 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 huge chapter. I bet you guys thought I was gonna say penis, but I didn't. About names, first names, in for male and female, for different races and classes, and how those apply to grades in school and family income levels. What you didn't think could correlate somehow does correlate, and I guess using that to kinda extrapolate for some, making, being able to make some sense of the randomness of our lives. I guess that could be a good use of the info in this book. I mean, but, but in the end of the audio version, there is a two hour long section. The whole book is eight hours long. So mind you, this is a whole quarter of the book. And you know what it's about? Well, the book was written by a journalist for writing reasons and an economist for subject reasons. And this whole 25% of the book, or the audio version, is a whole, it's a long story about who the economist, it's all about the economist, who the economist is, how he's different from other economists, what other economists in training or whatever said about him and his theories and everything while he was in school, his strengths and his weaknesses. And they really seemed to put a lot of emphasis on those two things. Like what his strengths, he's really, really good at them. But his weaknesses, he really, really fucking sucks at them, okay? And these guys who wrote the book, they really like to look at like the dark side of things. Not dark, like depressing, just darker, like the side that no one really cares about. <laughs> but it's weird. Because many of these things have caused him so much controversy over the years. Like, he looks at things that people care about, but he looks at them from angles that no one cares about. I think this section is trying to say, look, all of this is not that big of a deal, honestly. Especially compared to actual economics, but it is pretty different. I mean, it's like the opposite of economics. And no one else is talking about these things, except maybe kind of Malcolm Gladwell. But if you look at the cover of this book, <laughs> Malcolm Gladwell's quote about it is actually at the top. And he says, like, prepare to be 
blown away. And Malcolm Gladwell is a very, very smart man. Quotes, life is not very sweet outside the elite. Even in retreat mode, experts can be self-serving. A gun scrambles the outcome of any dispute. When hazard is high and the outrage is low, people underreact. And when hazard is low and outrage is high, people overreact. Direction one. I recommend this book for, I guess, anyone who wants to look at economics from a rare perspective? This is an unusual perspective. I think maybe a reason I wasn't that crazy about this book is that I'm not that crazy about economics, at least relative to other things that I am crazy about. So maybe I don't really know that much about what this book's information is kind of proposing and what that is up against. But maybe someday I'll re-listen after I'm a little bit more informed on this topic and I might feel very different about it. I don't know. I mean, this guy put years and years and years into his study I don't know why I didn't get that much out of this book. I don't. I really don't. I feel like I should have gotten more. This is not some book that's just like pretentious or anything like that. Direction two. If you like this book, you will fucking love Malcolm Gladwell's Blink, his book uh, The Tipping Point, or Outliers. Freakonomics by Stephen Dubler and Stephen Levitt. There's a link in the description if you guys want to check it out and read the reviews. There's a link to that and all the other books that I mentioned in this video as well if you want to check those out too. If there are any other books that you guys want me to check out and review, please let me know in the comments below. Also let me know if you checked out this book and you liked it, but hey, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already because I don't know why people watch this far into my videos and they don't subscribe, but if you have subscribed and you want to turn it up just a notch and turn on that notification bell to receive a notification every time I drop a new video, that would mean the world to me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. You can find me everywhere and I will see you then.